Hello everybody and we are back with part two of the curious news with the curious bunny. So the first story today, <laughs> dogs can tell when people are lying to them. Yep, those old uh, furry friends, they, uh, they're they not that stupid. A team of researchers at the University of Vienna has found that doggies can sometimes tell when people are lying to them. In their paper published Proceedings of the Royal Society B, the group describes experiments they conducted with hundreds of pooches and, and what was learned about their ability to detect deception in unknown people. So it's not their owners. Does it say owners here? Oh, people. Right, okay. So not their mummies and daddies then. Adult humans have been found to engage in mental state assessments of others. People determine based on various clues the truthfulness of other people. For example, so it's, it's yeah, basically I suppose if a dog can read a person's face and read their their mannerisms, they probably can. That's how we can tell when someone's lying. There's a few little methods that I have, but um, I won't tell you in case my hubby's listening. But I can tell a liar like I can smell a fart in a lift. Anyway, right, so I'm going to put the link in to all these stories so you can read them for yourself. But this is really interesting, isn't it? You know, are animals getting more intelligent or are we just respecting their intelligence more? I, I don't know. It seems that the humans are getting thicker and the animals are getting more intelligent. But um, interesting, isn't it? So in the experiment, all of the dogs were taught to follow the advice of an unknown human in choosing which of two bowls contained a hidden treaty. By following the advice, they received the treat and the researchers mixed things up. They allowed the dogs to watch as another unknown human moved the treat from one bowl to another. While a second unknown human watched. In other cases, the second human was absent from the switch up. The researchers then conducted the same experiment with the dogs and the second person in the switch up to see if the dogs would continue to follow the advice. The researchers found the dogs ignored the human advice if the person had not been present when the bowls were switched. They knew the person did not know which bowl had the treat. But more importantly, half the dogs ignored the human advice when they knew from observation the human was pointing at the wrong bowl. Wow, evidence indicating that the dogs knew the humans were lying. So there you go, folks. Maybe the dogs are trying to take over the world. So the second story today is about the Anglo-Saxons. Archaeologists have found the lair of an exiled Anglo-Saxon hermit king. Interesting, isn't it? So there's the lair. Okay, so there we go. Let's uh, read on. A British cave dwelling has been identified as the refuge for an exiled Anglo-Saxon king, according to archaeologists. Anchor Church Caves, located by the River Trent in a secluded part of the countryside in central England, was long considered to be an 18th century folly. An extravagant building made solely for or ornamentation or as a joke. But a new study has revealed that the cave house is the real deal. The 1,200-year-old structure was built during the tumultuous life of the Northumbrian king Eadulf, who was hounded from his throne to live as a hermit and later became a saint. Local legend said Eadulf, or Saint Kaldulf, as he was later known, lived inside the cave dwelling after he was disposed and exiled for mysterious reasons in AD 806. A fragment from, the, from a 16th century book states that Eadwulf has a cell in a cliff a little from the Trent and the banished king was buried in AD 830 at a location just five kilometres from the cave. Adverts look. It's 
Sorry, I've got rid of that. Oh my God, look at this, look. Yeah, that, that does look like someone's been, you know, helping make some structures there. I'm sure it would, that wouldn't happen naturally that perfect, but I don't know. Edmund Simmons, an archaeologist at the Royal Art Agricultural University in England and the principal investigator of the project, is convinced that Eardwolf lived in the caves under the watchful eye of his enemies. Wow. Well, why would they watch him in there? Why wouldn't they just go and get him? The architectural similarities with Saxon buildings and the documented association with Hardwolf and Edwolf make a convincing case that these caves were constructed or enlarged to house the exiled king. Interesting, isn't it, folks? Eardwolf lived and ruled during a time of persistent political instability in medieval England. During the 7th, 8th and 9th centuries, seven key kingdoms and over 200 kings intrigued, murdered and warred against each other in a fervent, constant scramble for supremacy. Eardwolf took the throne in AD 796 after the killing of his two immediate predecessors and ruled Northumbria for, over, for only 10 years before he was chased from power, possibly according to some scholars, by his own son, to spend his remaining years in exile in the rival kingdom of Mercia. It's really interesting, if you look back to England's history, it wasn't until, I think it was um, Alfred the Great that bought England, made England what it was. It was full of lots of little kingdoms. Really interesting. I'm going to be doing a history series on it. I know it might be a little bit boring for some of you folks, but I find it interesting. And it is the Curious Bunny, and it is a curious topic, and anything curious goes on here. Anyway, um, I'll move on to the next one. Right then, we've got another story here. Perfectly preserved 310 million year old fossilised brain found. You couldn't make this up. Right. Okay, so there we go. Right. Um, we're just looking for the brain. Okay. Let's read on, shall we? Researchers have uncovered a never before seen fossilised brain from a 310 million year old horseshoe crab revealing some surprising so, sorry some surprises about the evolution of these wannabe crustaceans they're wannabes they're not real crabs apparently well they're not real crustaceans according to a new study intriguing the fossilized brain gross which belongs to the extinct species europops denani was that something like that anyway was discovered in Mazan Creek in Illinois where the conditions were just right to perfectly preserve the animal's delicate soft tissue there are four species of horseshoe crabs alive today all of which sport hard exoskeletons ten legs and a u-shaped head despite their name these crabs are actually anakids oh my god that are closely related to scorpions and spiders according to the national wildlife federation although horseshoe crab fossils are relatively common nothing was previously known about their ancient brains this is the first and only evidence for a brain in a fossil horseshoe crab the paleontologist at the university of new england in mame says the chances of finding a fossilized brain are one in a million although even then chances they are are even rarer so there you go um okay what's this here is this something different what's that that don't look like a fossilized brain of a crab does it oh this is a different story sorry looking for any more photos um no more photos just this so there you go there's the old uh, mr crab and uh, his brain is in there apparently so horseshoe crabs brains 310 million years old do you believe this are you convinced that the earth is as long as what is as old as what people say it is i'm not i'm not convinced do you know how long a year feels imagine 300 million of them and things are still there if that was the case and dinosaurs were really roaming the earth wouldn't we all be tripping over dinosaur bones I don't know. I, I, 
none of this makes sense. I, I question everything that we're told, I really do. Anyway, let's go on to the next one. So, the next one is actually not that far from me in Yorkshire. The entrance to hell. Oh God, don't tell Cindy Christa, she'll be throwing me in. With bottomless lake and woods for sale in Yorkshire. So it's <laughs> crazy. Legend says the lake in the North York Moors is the gateway to Satan's kingdom. I drove through there the other week. It's beautiful. Look at that. Where's the curve, folks? Where is the curve? Anyway, there you go. There's a little lake there. So I'll have to go and find this. I still have not found the other um, monoliths yet in that weird thing we went to. That triangle thing. Right. Legend says the entrance to hell is at the bottom of the Gormire Lake. And now you could own it. You could all club together, Cindy Christa, and buy me the lake and then you could lob me in and I'll be gone forever. Ever fancied owning the entrance to hell? Cindy Christa has. No. Well, it might be worth that the gateway to eternal damnation can be found at the bottom of the Gormire Lake below Sutton Bank in North Yorkshire. But it's still a pretty cool story about a very pretty spot that's on the market. For half a million, that's not that much for hell, you get nearly 53 acres of pristine North York Moors woodland and a 16-acre lake. Why? Which folklore says is bottomless. Interesting. Oh, you look happy. Don't you want the lake? Sorry, folks, just an advert about people claiming benefits. Anyway, uh, it's it, it almost certainly isn't bottomless. Not that you'll ever find out. Well, why not? If what if they say it's bottomless, go and bloody find out. Someone buy it. Snoopy's interfering. Hold on. It's just getting a bit squeaky. Not that you'll ever find out, but it adds to the mystique of this legendary lake. If that was me and I had the... Snoop Dogg. If that was me and I had the money, I would be buying that thing and sending the submarine down or whatever, them little pod things that come out of a submarine. Interesting. I'm guessing I can't go and find this then if it's for sale. I wonder who owns it. It's a lovely spot for open water swimming and fishing maybe you can go in there then it's a nice conversation starter at parties so basically this is like a for sale and um, this is like a sales ad for this lake so if you want to buy it then it's a nice spot for swimming and fishing it's a nice conversation starter at parties so that's about it really there's not oh here we go did you know i own the entrance to hell yeah What's it like? Very nice. So this this is the sort of things. If you've got half a million knocking about, you've got conversation starters for a party. You can go skinny dipping. You can you can throw people into hell that you don't like. It's win win. The lake is a great spot for wild swimming and fishing. Watch out for pike if you're doing either. Yeah, pike will bite your bloody toes. There's also sporting rights over 114 acres of neighbouring farmland. Does that mean shooting animals, I wonder? A state agent, Savills of York, is marketing the property which forms part of the Gormire site of specialist, special scientific interest because of its wine range of vegetation. So there you go. Um, it is a beautiful, beautiful area. Oh, look at that farm. Gorgeous. There are some absolutely stunning places around in Yorkshire, especially North Yorkshire. Um, another advert. They look a bit happier than the last family. Why have we circled his hat? I don't want to know. It's too big. Oh, God, there's Moody Lot again. And that's it. Oh, blimey. Look at him. Right then, that's it for that story. Let's see what else he's knocking about. Right, the next one. Archaeologists baffled by intact Viking boat burial found under Scottish property. So here we go. There we go. Viking boat burial on the left there. And there's a picture of some Viking man looking out with his horns. Um, a Viking boat barrel was uncovered in Orkney in 2015. Why is it news now? I missed something here. Uh, no, it's today's news. Archaeologists were left baffled after an intact Viking boat burial was uncovered under a property in Orkney in the Northern Isles of Scotland, of Bonnie Scotland. Um, very strange. 
Is this is this to do with this? Remnants. No, that's a different thing. Okay. The Vikings originated in what is now Denmark, Norway and Sweden and became famous for plundering and raiding their way through Europe in the 11th century. Expert sailors and navigators aboard their long ships established numerous settlements, including in the British Isles. In 2015, human remains believed to be from the Viking Age were found on the northeast coast of Papa Westra Orkney and left archaeologists amused. Lindsay Dunbar from AOC Archaeology explained what happened during a recent History Hit podcast. A landowner was doing renovation work in a small building at the end of his estate. While he was trying to underpin the walls, he disturbed some human remains. We were quickly dispatched up there and got what turned out to be a classic Viking boat burial. So there you go, looking out to sea. Um, I wonder how old these paintings are. They look quite old. Um, it was very much unexpected. So this was found in 2015. I'm guessing they've only just come out and said it now. Um, it was such a small building that the boat was kind of slightly larger than the building itself. Wow. The archaeologist detailed how experts slowly uncovered the incredible 10th century grave. It extended out of either side of it. It found the stern came out under the door of the building. Substantially, the boat was intact under the building, but obviously it disturbed it slightly while underpinning. How interesting is this? Well, maybe it wasn't buried. Maybe it's just that the land has slid over time. I know that when we were in York, in the Yorvik Centre, that the all of the, the things, the finds that they found were all under the ground. And that's just over time, the way that the land had just, you know, slid and things get lower over time. So, I don't know. It's very bizarre, isn't it? It had spotted the odd nail in the material he was moving, which were obviously from the boat. It was in better condition than we first imagined. It's a wooden boat. So in many examples, very little of the boat survives. So you have the shadows of where the boat is. The most crucial part is the nails that hold the boat together. Experts were able to carefully piece it back together, but could not work out who it was made for. Oh, they've just discovered who it was made for. That's why. Oh, blimey, look. You, Viking warriors, look. Look at that. I'm mad to that to think that that is a real Viking why is his, his brain over here and his spine over there and his bones? Hmm. Okay, and let's read on. If you can plot out where these are and, and carefully excavate, it will show you the plan of the boat. Alongside the rare Viking boat burial, a second grave of a man furnished with weapons, including a sword, were found at the site. Oh, wow, look. Yeah, they always put the sword next to the body in the hand, I think, Vikings. There's not much body left there, though, is there? There's like a skull and a sword. Where's his legs? Um, interesting, isn't it? Eh? Some, of the, some of those are pretty impressive. We've recovered 230 nails. The bow is about five metres long and one and a half metres wide. Yeah, the Vikings were pretty good at what they did, even though they weren't very nice, but who was in those days? Um, well, I suppose the, the Saxons were trying to sort of form a civil society, um, which, you know, the, the Vikings came in and kind of destroyed. But at the end of the day, who won? The yeah, Saxons won, so... And that's what I, that's what I am. I come from... Ang I'm an Anglo-Saxon. Experts theorise that they may have belonged to the first generation Nor Norwegian settlers in Orkney given similarities to other burials, the first generation Vikings. Post-excavation an analysis, I can't speak, analysis, analysis is now to be undertaken of the graves and their contents after funding was secured from Historic Environment Scotland last week. They will analyse the graves to give new insights. So that's really interesting. They found the boat, but they didn't know where it was from, and now they know it was Viking. Oh, my God. We, these adverts are just so annoying. Anyway, right, that's it for today, I think. There'll be another one coming up soon. I'll be doing a couple a week. I've had a, a lot of positive feedback from these. So I 
folks seem to be enjoying the uh, the curious news with the curious bunny. We'll get Snoopy involved on the next one. He did some squeaking. I don't think you heard him, but he was squeaking in the background. We're in a different room, you see. But anyway, we'll see you all very, very soon. And uh, I'll see you on the next one. Take care for now. Bye-bye.